Welcome to our woods. This is a woodland that is about 120 years old. And it's private, so it's not open to the public, but we want to share with you what it means in this day and time. Uh, it's got roughly 14 different species of trees within about a half of an acre here. Expand that number to 18 or 19 when you go a couple of three acres into the neighbor's properties. But nonetheless, this is moderate diversity in terms of trees. There's uh, probably three different shrubs that grow in here. And I don't know how long ago it was, but sometime in the past, certainly past 50 years ago, this actually was the end of a pasture. You can find old barbed wire in the trees stuck showing the end of the pasture uh, going toward this little brook down here, which is called Broad Brook. Now, what I'd like to share with everyone is what this forest means in its present condition. It's a mature forest as opposed to young. It's not old growth, not in 120 years or so. Forest managers and um, conservationists often speak in terms of ecosystem services that would be provided by a forest or a woodland. That often translates to wildlife habitat, a big plus, everybody likes wildlife, so you're thinking of the forest in terms of what species that it uh, supports. It's also important, woodlands, forests, for uh, protecting watershed. That's a big plus. Um, aesthetics, just having quiet places to walk, the magic of the woodland. But there's another feature of these woodlands in particular that I want to concentrate on in this, this video, and that is the role of this kind of forest, this age of forest, in climate mitigation. Now we all hear about the value of forest lands to mitigating global warming. There's a lot of confusion on that topic. You hear a lot of uh, people saying that basically we want as much young forest as we can have, that the younger forests are where the action is, that they, their rates of sequestration are higher, and therefore the more younger forests we have, the better we will be toward climate mitigation. You have at the other end of the spectrum, some people are saying, well, no, wait a minute, look at the forest. All the carbon is in the older stands of trees that have been left to grow over a period of 150 or maybe 200 or even more years. That's where the carbon is. You don't want to upset that balance by resetting the clock. Then the younger forest advocates will come in and basically say, well, yeah, but the rate of carbon sequestration is so high in young forests that it will make up for any loss uh, in the older forest. Is that true? This, in addition to being our private woodlands, is also my research forest. There's been a lot of confusion about the idea of what young forests do versus middle age versus old. I'd like to help people understand that better. First of all, what do we mean when we say young? Do we mean 20 years? Do we mean 40 years? Do we mean 60 years? What do we mean when we mean old? As old as a tree can grow? This is a white pine, Pinus strobus. It's again about 120 years old, 125 at the most. It's a research tree. You can see one of my tags on it, and I have a number of tags. I model these trees using high-performance equipment like lasers and uh, other instruments that allow me to actually divide this tree up into sections, figure out the volume of each section and put the whole tree together. At 50 years, it would have only done 25% of its work in terms of growing, in terms of sequestering carbon. So the big job occurs after those early years if you're talking about managing, then you certainly aren't talking about carbon sequestration being maximized at those early years. It happens later, and you, you don't make it as far as the carbon mitigation uh, 
service by cutting the, the forest progression off too soon. You let it go, you don't cut it off at 40 or 50 years or any number like that. With that said, I'd like to turn attention here in these mature woods to some of the other species that make this forest especially interesting, at least to me. If uh, we see back here, two trees that have uh, lighter colored bark. These two trees are tulip trees. Lumbermen call them yellow poplar. They're actually uh, a magnolia. Uh, but the two back here are mature, and both of them are above 130 feet in height, and probably comparably old to this white pine. What makes these two, and a big one over there, and a big one over there, and in fact, a cluster of them, to include young trees growing up is that this represents a corridor, uh, one of the natural corridors of, for Lyria dendron tulipifera going northeast in Massachusetts along with a property in Waitley, Mass uh, that will be ad, uh, administered by the Kestrel Trust that represent the northeasternmost natural occurrences of this species and to have big mature tulip trees right in our backyard is, is quite exciting, has always been exciting to me. Uh, you don't even see the blossoms, they're so tall, until they start coming down. But we've actually overflown with a quadcopter and photographed the blossoms on top of the trees and it's really a magnificent sight. And then you realize this whole corridor here is mature forest and as such, it's doing its job service-wise for carbon, but also for interior forest birds. Beyond the novelty of uh, tulip trees, the main hardwood in here is the northern red oak. So this northern red oak, among others, such as the one behind with the tag, they're very mature. I suppose that they would be valuable as lumber. They have straight trunks and they're good solid. But we want them just as they are because they are providing all these other services. And the fact that we have this mature woodland and it's providing these services made us realize that within the general area of the, well, the Connecticut River Valley, that People need to know that there are at least a few places that are, are left alone for nature to manage. And that, uh, th that's the segue for me to introduce my wife, Monica. Monica, will you come here and rescue me? <laughs> <laughs> I think he did a very good job of explaining it. We have the Monica and Bob Leverett Forever Wild Fund at Kestrel Land Trust. A while back in this video, Bob mentioned the northernmost, northeasternmost place where tulip trees seed wild. And one of those places is the Waitley Woods. And we are currently raising funds to preserve the Waitley Woods as forever wild. Forever wild is what you get when you leave woods alone like this.